Hello YouTube, this is Phil Tornier today and what I'm going to show you is the difference between inverters, charge controllers, batteries, solar panels, and what's most important thing to get on your solar array. And why would you get something like that versus getting the cheaper knockoff, really inexpensive brand stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and start with batteries because you have to store your power or you pay the grid to use, let you them use yours. So, you know, I don't want to deal with the grid, so I decided to go with batteries. Because first, it takes less uh, effort to get uh, a solar array installed in your house. Second, you have a place of storage, depending on how safe you design it. This right here is probably the best choice as of right now for uh, beginners. Buy you one or two of these. These are AGM batteries. If no, you don't know, that's advanced glass mat batteries. These don't vent gas. So you can charge it in your you know, basement if you wanted to. I don't recommend charging anything inside of your house unless it's safety sealed because if you short circuit this battery, it's going to get hot and explode. So just remember that. Charge outside in a building, heat and cool the building. It's probably the best thing to do. Second, you have to charge those batteries without overcharging. And I don't care what anybody says, you cannot put a little tiny solar panel on a massive battery bank and not use any of the power without overcharging because you'll overcharge it. The voltage will go real high, vent the, uh, the liquid off of the batteries, and then you're done. It don't work anymore. So you're going to have to get a charge controller. This is a very inexpensive uh, Renergy uh, knockoff brand. It's a EP Solar. I, I think this was like 70 bucks. This is a 20 amp charge controller. And a way to pay attention to your batteries. Got to be able to read them. If you can't read what you're doing with your batteries, you're wasting your time. You gotta have an inverter to transfer power from direct current to alternating current. This is a cheap knockoff 750 watt inverter. Piece of junk. It's cheap and I wouldn't put this on any of my equipment ever again. Why do I have it? Well, I was blinded by whatever I didn't know now you can come here to my channel and I can help you with what I had to go through to learn this is uh, you know five years old maybe six years old um, it used to work on my TVs and I used to charge some stuff with it it tore up a lot of batteries whenever I charged with it it tore up uh, cameras camera battery chargers it tore up stuff whenever I plugged into it, so why would you not get a pure sine wave inverter? If it doesn't say pure sine wave inverter, I don't recommend you get it at all because it's going to tear up your equipment. This is going to kill it. Um, what I do recommend is getting chargers that are designed for 12 or 24 volt circuits. You can read on most chargers, they say 12 or 24 volts that plug in your cigarette lighter. So that way, if you're just doing it to charge your cell phones, you can get a transformer. Well, it's not a transformer, it's a transistor with a couple different capacitors inside of it uh, and some diodes as well. And it's going to uh, charge your phone. If you get a high quality one, you get a high quality one. If you get a cheap one, you get a cheap one. Um, but like I said, you're going to have to research on what you buy from a 12 volt or 24 volt circuit. Um, and you're going to have to charge your batteries and supply power to your charge controller as well. And that's where you got a solar panel. This is an Ames solar panel. It's, uh, you can see there's cracks in it. Um, it's, it's about four years old. 
and you can see there's cracks in three, four pan, four cells. Here's a cracks here. Here's cracks here. So oh, there's five, six cracks. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of these cells has cracked over five, four years. So you know that you're seeing what you're going to be getting. This is an Ames panel. It's not very high quality. Um, they outputted the same amount of power as before, but the cells are getting hot. Whenever I put power to it and I charge off of it, each one of these cells that are cracked overheat. You can see that with the thermal imaging camera. So you got to get high quality solar panels. Well, uh, where, what kind of solar panels would you recommend? I don't know. I mean, I've got Canadian solar currently on my roof, but I haven't had it for four years. I've had it for six months. I don't see any broken cells up there. But like I said, you're going to have to get something to charge. So that's just going to be up in the air. I feel like Canadian solar is pretty reasonable quality. Um, Alti store had dropped my pallet of solar panels and they wouldn't repair or uh, replace all the panels that was damaged so I had to replace them myself so I got burned out of uh, you know almost a thousand bucks from Alti store so let's just don't worry about that but like I said you're going to want to get a moderate MPPT charge controller and a way to monitor it, you're going to want to get some decent batteries. Don't go out to this, your uh, local big box store that sells batteries like your auto parts stores. Don't go there. You're going to have to go get some Trojan batteries. You're going to have to get some AGM batteries. Or what I'm going to do next is uh, edi uh, Iron Edison batteries, which are salt water based. And that's what I'm getting next. Period. That's next. Will I ever buy a modified sine wave inverter? Not for anything besides an electric motor. And that would be for like a skill saw or a, you know, a re reciprocating saw. You know, power saws, power tools, it probably isn't going to hurt your equipment to run it on modified sine wave or square sine wave. But there's no way I'm going to plug up my cell phone to the power output of this. But I will plug it up to a decent ch car charger that you can attach to this right here. So, is it possible to run, you know, batteries off of this? You know, recharge your batteries safely off of this? Absolutely. But you have to get a decent car charger and charge it with a decent uh, car charger. Now, somebody mentioned to me about these uh, power packs that uh, hold lithium batteries. I'm, I've got one somewhere. It's got a little light on it. And it's like, you know, 10,000 watt hours or whatever it is. So, I don't think it's watt hours. Milliwatt hours or uh, whatever. But, like I said, you're going to be looking at a situation with that itself. It, uh, if you got a poor quality one, it will damage your phone because it will probably output more current than it's supposed to be. You're going to want to get one that will output like 0.5 amps to 1 amp. Now, if your cell phone's designed to handle a faster charger, you'll go to your cell phone and the original charging pack that came with mine was a Samsung and it came with a Samsung Quick Charge. So I look at the Samsung Quick Charge and I look at the 5 volts that's uh, an output and it's going to say an output of amps or watts. It's more likely to be amps. If it says watts then you divide that into the volts. If it's amps you're going to multiply it into the volts. And that's going to tell you how many watts it's going to output. But you're going to want to look directly for how many amps it's going to output and make sure that you're not ever charging your phone faster than that. So you can go lower and it'll just charge slower, but if you go higher, then it's going to output more power than that phone's designed to handle. So be cautious about that. You don't want to overcharge your phone, 
you want to make sure that you got the right kind of chargers for your phone or you know laptop or anything don't plug up anything the modified sine wave that is electronic if it's sensitive to electricity don't use modified sine wave it's going to kill your equipment and you're going to want to get an MPPT charge controller that stands for maximum power point tracking if you don't get maximum power point tracking you're wasting your money um, if I was to go and put up 2,000 watts of solar power on PWM charge controllers, don't ask me the name of it, I mean I can't remember, but I quit messing with PWMs a long time ago, but the PWMs only charge at 12 volts, so let's say this outputs 18 to 20 volts, okay, and at 18 to 20 volts, we can run you know seven amps or whatever it is so if we can run seven amps at 20 volts with this charge controller that means the charge controller is going to step down the voltage and increase the amperage to output more power so I've got a 120 watt solar panel here and I'll do some math for you and since it's 120 watts at maximum power point tracking Let's say you're going to be looking at, you know, 7 amps times, you know, 18 volts. Well, that's about 126 watts. Now, if we bring it down with a PWM, the voltage will go down. It's going to go down to like, you know, 12 volts, 12.5 volts times 7 amps. That's 87 watts. Look how much power I'm losing. I had 126 watts with a P, uh, MPPT and then 87 watts with a PWM. So you're looking at like a, a 30 to 40 percent power reduction with the PWM charge controllers. So that's why you want to use an MPPT. I don't even own a PWM charge controller anymore. They're garbage. They're not worth buying for yourself. They're not worth using unless it's a little tiny system. Because little tiny systems don't lose a lot of power. 30 to 40 percent of your power, gosh, that's a lot, but if it's, you know, 30 to 40 watts you're losing out of a tiny system, I guess it's okay. No big deal, but if you're losing, you know, three or four hundred watts that's a big deal so this is just a simple go over with uh, the basic breakdown of parts on solar this is the beginning of a uh, a series on a video I'm gonna build a uh, portable emergency power pack so I'm gonna put this battery and this charge controller and this right here, like if you needed to run a power motor somewhere out in the field on a job, you know, I can take it with me. Or if I needed to, uh, you know, run a refrigerator, a tiny refrigerator, mind you, off of this, I might be able to start it with this, but I doubt it. I'll, uh, I mean, I know it would run a water cooler because that's, that's what this thing ran for a long time. But, uh, you know, I'm going to put it all together and, you know, try to explain to you in the next video what parts do what and, you know, well, I've already done what parts do what, but, you know, how to wire up those parts. So this is Philip 20 with solar power and electricity and electronics, and I'm going to help you guys make some solar later.